I mentioned last week when I did a updated video on tying the hammerhead uh, that I had come up with another version called the baby hammerhead and that's what this fly is right here. This is basically just a scaled down version. It's on a little bit different uh, style hook. It's a little bit shorter hook, same tailing material. The rabbit is a regular 1 8 inch zonker instead of a magnum and the beads are a little bit smaller, but otherwise it's essentially the same as a hammerhead and there's no weight on this. Thought behind that is to make it a little bit lighter, less likely to splat on the water when you cast it, as well as less likely to spook any wary fish that you're casting to. That's the baby hammerhead. I'll go ahead and get started tying. start baby hammerhead with a Daiichi 1720 hook basically the same as a, a TMCO 200R. I like the curved part of this. I also like it's a shorter shank and that was kind of the whole point of the, the smaller version of the hammerhead. I just wanted something a little bit shorter. It's going to eliminate the need for the brown yarn that's used in the hammerhead. And that was kind of the point. You could you can even go with even shorter, but I'm using a regular zonker on this. That means that's cut to one eighth instead of uh, one quarter, like on a magnum. And I'm going to actually instead of overwrap, overlapping those wraps as I wrap them in, they're going to go in front of each other. So in, in order to get four of them and have enough bulk of hair on there, I needed just a little bit more space. After I get my hook in the vise, I'll go ahead and debarb it. There's no lead on this one. So I'm going to attach my thread, which I'm using a UTC 140 denier in black for this. You need a little bit stronger thread. I'm going to attach that to the hook shank, stopping about a good eye length behind the eye of the hook. Just like on the regular hammerhead, I need a little bit of space there to tie everything in and get a nice transition. For beads, I'm using a medium bead chain on this instead of the extra large. Also, this is a size six hook. So I wanted something just a little bit smaller than that size four hook that the original hammerhead was tied in with. Remember this, the idea behind this fly is it's lighter. It's not going to slap on the water as much as the original hammerhead. And so when fish are a little bit spooky and a little wary, this is going to be hopefully uh, a nice little presentation. I'm going to run my thread down again. Don't bulk up with a lot of thread wraps around the beads right there. You need that space. Don't worry if these get moved. You can always rotate those back in place before we secure the rabbit in. I'm run my thread down to just about the point of the hook and tie in the tail. For the tail, I'm using the same material as I did for the regular hammerhead. And that is an, a fluorescent orange and a fluorescent yellow glow-in-the-dark mylar motion. I want to get three strands of each. I'm going to secure that on the hook right here, wrapping. And when I wrap this in, I'm going to wrap forward three or four wraps. And there's a, a reason that I do that. I'm going to explain here in just a second. It's a common use technique when you're tying in certain materials and fly tying. 
to bring them up under the thread like that, using the thread as kind of like a, a third hand. However, when you do this, especially in this case, because we're going to fold back what's up front here to make up the tail, one of the things that you run into is um, when you fold it back, your thread not catching right. I'm going to tie in the same brown black flaked silly legs that I used in the regular hammerhead. If you haven't seen that video, there's also a link down below to that. So I've tied all of these in and I want to fold those back. If I just take them where my thread is at right now, I'm on the outer edge of when that's folded like this. Notice what happens to my thread. It comes around the top, and you can see it just pops right around to the front of it. So I'm not actually getting it folded down. They're, they're still sticking out forward. So what you're left with in that situation is you have to reach behind like this to fold it down. And even then, sometimes, depending on what the material is, you can reach behind a little bit and it, it'll still plop around forward. So what I like to do is as I am tying each one of these in, as I mentioned before, I started back here, I'm moving the thread forward because when I get the last bit in, I'm now going to wrap my thread backwards to the end of the body where the tail's at. And I, when I fold this over, it just goes over nice and easy. I don't have to worry about it slipping, moving out of place or anything. And I secure those tail materials in very well. I come forward making just a little bit of a transition down from that. Don't have to really worry about it that much. I'm going to bring my thread forward to about halfway between the bead chain eyes and the back of the body. So, so far in this fly, all we've done is we've tied in the bead chain eyes and the tailing material. And now we've got a rabbit zonker that we're going to tie in and secure. And then that's it. That's the end of the fly. So there's really not much to it. You can whip these out in about five minutes um, once you get going with them. As I mentioned, I'm using a, this is a barred rabbit zonker. It's actually off of a whole uh, half of a rabbit skin that's been cut in zonkers and, and barred. This is not the same as the Magnum. It's a little bit lighter orange color, but I think it'll do fine. I'm going to tie that in the same way with the skin side up, securing that to the top of the, the hook all the way down to the tail. and securing that to the hook shank, bringing my thread forward. Oops, made a mistake there. Because the there is no uh, brown yarn tied in this that gets secured on the bottom in the step of the hammerhead, which is kind of a cue that you're going to flip the fly over and then tie in the zonker. Often when I'm doing this one, I forget that at this stage. Now, it's probably not a big deal in terms of completing the fly and, and getting it done. But I do like the process. I think it's a little bit cleaner and neater up around the bead chain. If I secure this on the inside of the hook shank and then flip it over to, fit, to secure that up over the bead chain. So now having this in the right position, I'll go ahead and secure this down to the hook shank. Smooth that up a little bit. And then the same thing, I'm going to bring it around to the front and have my thread hanging off the front of the bead chain eyes. I'm going to palmer this forward, but when I do wrap this in, each wrap is just going to go in front of the other one. I'm not going to try to overlap a little bit. You're going 
get about four wraps in and then secure it across the bead chain. Last part, you're going to flip that back over. You want to make certain that the front edge of that hide is getting tucked in by that bead and the hook shank right here. That gives me a nice clean split on that hide for tying in between those bead chain eyes. Thread comes around from the front to the back. I'll get three or four wraps in to secure that. I want to bring my scissors in and I want to push them down so they're right up against that thread, almost on top of that thread, so that when I cut that hide off, I have a nice little pointed piece that's right along those thread wraps, easy to tie in and lash down, as you can see, so that we can secure that, clean up that area behind, or I should say between the bead chain eyes, where that hide and the hair is at, so that it looks nice and neat. Then we have it all finished. So this way, as you can see on the top and on the bottom, it looks pretty nice and neat. Sometimes I think on the top there, I've got just a sliver of the orange hide showing through the the thread wraps. I don't worry about that in terms of fishing this fly. Now for the internet, I suppose I have to make that look just excellent. So I'll put a wrap or two over it. But if I were tying this to go fishing and everything, I would probably just go ahead and finish it off in the front like this with a little taper down to the eye of the hook and call it a day. A seven or eight turn whip finish. You don't have to make the head up here as bulky as that is. Some of my wraps moved on me there. Just going to make this look a little bit neater. Got to be careful because if you pile up too many wraps right up here, this is what happens. Your thread will kind of slide on itself. As I was saying, you don't have to have, you know, that many thread wraps behind the eye of the hook and everything. That's just how this one kind of turned out. These flies can sometimes be kind of a messy fly. I mean, they're not your nice, neat little nymphs and, and wet flies, especially with all the rabbit hair and the leg material and everything going on there. And then once you start fishing these things, they're definitely going to get banged around and, and the thread is going to get busted up a little bit and chewed up. I don't put any UV or epoxy on the thread wraps to protect it. You certainly could if you wanted to. To me, I'd rather just spend the extra time, you know, putting in, tying in another fly. And then if one gets banged up too much, then there you go. Just swap it out. 
I'm going to put some head cement all along those thread wraps. I really want to saturate those. I'm actually going to put a little bit more on here in just a minute. I want that to soak down in real well on all those thread wraps. Tail, same thing. I'm going to make this about the length of the body or so, and I'm going to cut these at varying lengths so that they're not all the same. That's the baby hammerhead. It has the same basic principle that you can cut the bead chain outer chains off if you beads off, I should say. If you don't like the rattle, you can trim back the tail. You can cut the tail out completely, but this is lighter. There's no lead on there, so this is going to be much lighter and less apt to spook fish. So that's the thought process behind the baby hammerhead. I know some people who are fishing it this year and we'll have to see how it does. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.